Hi, I'm Yav Zohar, tour guide with Green Olive Tours. I am Ismail Hidra, transportation manager with the Green Olive Tours. And we're standing in the Palestinian town of Aizariyeh, uh, the biblical Bethany, just uh, by the tomb of Lazarus, where Jesus brought Lazarus back from the dead, and where he stopped, where Jesus stopped on his last night before walking into Jerusalem. And we're going today to follow in the footsteps of Jesus and walk from here over the Mount of Olives into Jerusalem. Let's go together. Let's go. So we started walking and very soon we got stuck at the wall. This wall, it's between uh, families. My aunts cannot come to visit me in Altur, the other side, because the wall built. But for me, can I come to visit them? But it's a long way, around 40 minutes drive from Altur to here. So your aunts can't come. Business and movement suffer. But if somebody really wants to cross, from here into Jerusalem, there is a way? Yes, we can come to Al Zayim village and to sneak in from Al Zayim to uh, Jerusalem. It's easy. I mean, for aunt, my aunt is old. She cannot just sneak in. But for young people, yes, it's very easy. They tell us it's about security. It's not for security, not true, not true. This world, it's not between Israel and Palestinian. It's between Palestinian and Palestinian. So, like uh, your aunts, we're not going to try to climb over the wall. We're going to walk back down the steep hill that we climbed to uh, our bus and drive uh, around to Jerusalem. How long is that going to take us? 40 minutes. And instead, five minutes walk from here. 40 minutes. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. I come here to El Azaria, I feel that there is no security. Where we are now is this area B. It's the Palestinian Authority services, civilian services running by Palestinian Authority, and uh, security by Israel Army. But this area, uh, no man's land, no Palestinian police, no Israeli police. We don't have a dress to go to if we have any problem here. Many people who live here, they are from Jerusalem. They came here with the Jerusalem ID. They yeah, because many families lived here before the wall. I told you, in Israel, it's part of East Jerusalem. Yeah. Israel separated Israel from Jerusalem after 2002, Israel built the wall. That's why people lived here before the wall built. It's why it's why they, live, they live in one city. But uh, when the wall built in 2002, it separated the families. But then if the Israeli government uh, finds out that these people are living here, uh, then... You lose your status. What does it mean when you lose your status? You cannot come to Jerusalem. It means you cannot visit your family in Jerusalem and you cannot go your, to your work. In Isaiah, Ismail, what happens with water? People have water in their taps. Okay. It's a good question we are now. You can see front of you, there is a settlement. It's Mali Adumim settlement. It's a big settlement. They have 24 seven water. But here where we are in Elizaria, sometimes one week, two weeks, no water. That's what people do with this situation. They use black tank water on the roof of the houses. It's black tank water. If when Israel stop the water, 
people tell have some water in the black tank water. So we just go into the Israeli settlement of Male Adumim and we see first of all a much better road and we see grass and we see palm trees and grass and palm trees means a lot of water that's pumped out here to make this possible while in Ezaria people are getting water in their tap once a week and filling up tanks. A lot of Israeli government money is going to make Male Adumim attractive to Israelis to move here and of course those Israelis who move here remain absolutely Israeli citizens, while Palestinians that leave Jerusalem to Izariah, they can lose their residency. And here in the main roundabout is uh, the Fountain of Peace. The people of Male Adumim think of themselves as quite peaceful, although the entire design of Male Adumim here is part of a plan to hem in and surround East Jerusalem with Israeli settlements. We see this great difference here between being Israeli and being Palestinian. In the same place, there's different laws for you. So we're driving on the ancient Jericho road and about this road uh, Jesus tells a story. Jesus was Jewish and his disciples were Jewish and they knew that the most important commandment was Love thy brother, love thy neighbor as you love yourself. And in the time of Jesus in this area also was two uh, groups, two ethnic religious groups which were not friends, Jews and Samaritans. So who counts as my neighbor? Who counts as my brother? If somebody asks Jesus this question, and Jesus tells a story about a, a Jewish man who was walking on this road from Jerusalem to Jericho and was robbed and was beaten and left by the side of the road. And the Jewish priest passed and didn't help him, crossed to the other side of the road. And uh, another Jew, a Levite, passed and didn't help him and crossed to the other side of the road. And a Samaritan, uh, a member of the other group, uh, passed and was moved with compassion and stopped and dressed the wounds of this man and carried him to an inn and had him fed and taken care of. And Jesus tells this story and then he asks his listeners, who in this story is the man's friend? Who in this story is the man's neighbor? And they say, of course, the man who stopped to help him. And Jesus says, well, do like that man. So we're doing uh, the laffa, the, the big uh, turnaround uh, around the wall. And we've gone down and now we're going up another side of the Mount of Olives. As we go soon past the wall into uh, Jerusalem, uh, we will come to a checkpoint. And this is a checkpoint in the wall. And some cars here will get stopped and searched and questions and others uh, will pass through very easily. Ismail, how do they know in the checkpoints who to stop and who to let through? Sometimes they ask you questions, they listen to your accent, and sometimes you, you look to your face. If you look like Israelis, a tourist, you blend in, they give you to enter to the checkpoint. If you are our Arabs, if you are Arabic, they check your car and uh, check your ID, check your passport, uh, check everything in, in your car. Will they stop us now? First of all, I think we should soon put down the camera when we get close to them. And now we'll see. Uh, they look in the car, they'll be a little bit confused. If it was just Ismail, if it, they would stop him. Uh, if it was just you and me, uh, they would wave us through. Well, they asked all of us and I answered first, so they don't hear his Arabic accent. Look, before it was from here, there's a small street, take you to Altur. Now we have to drive straight, 
we meet the traffic light, we, have, we make a return from there to come back the same road back to turn after that to the right to Altur. My neighborhood, a tour on Mount of Olives. I live here, I am born in Mount of Olives. We pay tax for Jerusalem municipality, but we don't receive the same services. You see, there is no sidewalks. It's not clean like other places in West Jerusalem. We don't have enough schools. We use building apartments uh, for schools. We don't have playgrounds. We have only playground in this village, a small playground. We collect money from the people here. I, we know each other. We collect 10 shekels each. We, we build the uh, playground in, in the Mount of Olives. It's a small one, but it's make happy from our children. Also, if you want to build your house for you, uh, if you want to build the apartment, it's difficult to get a permit to build. They demolish the houses. Every week we have one, two, three houses. It's demolition by Israelis. They don't want me to stay here in this city. You want me to leave. Uh, Israel tell you, uh, I want to do, destroy your house, to demolish your house. Why do they demolish the house? Because the permit is hard to get. There is no choices for people. And people choose the other way. They build without a permit. What people can do? No options. Okay, you have finally we arrived after 40 minutes drive. Instead, five minutes walk. Uh, we are the other side now. Okay. So we started just a few hundred meters from here on the other side of the wall. We drove around through Aizariye and Ma'ala Dumim and the desert and the checkpoint and the neighborhood of Atul. And here we are in Betfagi. This is a place traditionally Jesus walked here those five minutes. And then here he got on a donkey and rode over the Mount of Olives to Jerusalem to fulfill the prophecy that says the Messiah will come into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. We made it. This is uh, where Jesus was going as a pilgrim. Today, there, the Dome of the Rock is a mosque, is the Aqsa Mosque. Ismail is going to go there uh, to pray. And before you go, Ismail, can you tell us why Aqsa is so important uh, to you? El Aqsa, for me, I am personally, it's, it's in my heart. I am going to pray every Friday. This is a special feeling when I uh, going to the Aqsa Mosque. It's, I feel very good. El Aqsa is red line for all Muslims and Arabs uh, in, in Jerusalem, in, in Palestine. It is in our Quran, El Aqsa Mosque. It's important for all the Muslims. Ismail, thank you for this journey. Uh, it's been uh, an honor and a pleasure to do this together. Thank you. Thank you, Yahav. Thank you. See you. So, Aqsa is this great anomaly in the middle of absolutely Israeli-controlled Jerusalem, almost a Palestinian autonomous zone. The Israeli police is all around Aqsa with a lot of arms and a lot of cameras, but mostly they stay out and allow Palestinians to run it. We, uh, the non-Muslims, uh, stay outside the mosque at this viewpoint. And this is a viewpoint basically for tourists in a Jewish cemetery 
overlooking a mosque uh, next to a Catholic church. And the Israeli government has chosen to name this viewpoint for an Israeli politician of the extreme right who was calling for the forced removal of Palestinians from this country. So th there's huge tensions here, and there were huge tensions here when Jesus came here. They were a little bit the other way around because it was Roman army all around and Judeans running the temple and the same huge tension. So every time Romans interfered with the temple, there was Jewish riots, uh, Jewish uprisings. Uh, and Jesus coming here felt that tension. The church next to us is the church of Dominus Flevit, the Lord cried, because Jesus, surrounded by all these people cheering him, stopped here, looked over the city and cried. And he cried not because of what was going to happen to him, he cried because of what was happening to Jerusalem. He cried because he had a vision of Jerusalem surrounded by army, uh, by barricades, hemmed in from all sides, and a terrible war coming. And he cried and he said, perhaps it's not too late. If only you, you Jerusalem, you the people listening, if only you would know the things that make for peace, but they are hidden from your eyes. And apparently, though things are still hidden from our eyes, the same tensions are here today. So what are the things that make for peace? Perhaps if we go back to uh, what Jesus told us uh, on the Jericho Road, the story of the Good Samaritan. First of all, love your brother as you love yourself. That is the thing that makes for peace. And who is your brother? Not necessarily the priest or the Levite, or the Jew, your brother is whoever needs your help and you can offer it to, whoever is your neighbor, whoever is there. If we could see that, then perhaps we would have the things that make for peace. everyone, I'm Fred Schlumka, Managing Partner of the Green Olive Collective. Thanks so much for viewing our new film, Jerusalem Revealed. Green Olive is an organization of Israelis and Palestinians working together for a better future for our children. We conduct tours, publish booklets, produce films and other activities all designed to foster democracy and respect for human rights throughout the country. Your interest in our work is much appreciated. But please note, we're not a charity or an NGO, but a social business that puts mission before profits. However, we do need income to sustain the organization, to pay our bills and staff, and that's where you come in. There's no charge to view the film, but I do ask that you make a contribution to the costs. If you like what you saw, if you support our work, then please make a tangible contribution to our ongoing success. Just go to JerusalemRevealed.com and make your contribution. Whatever you can afford will be appreciated. Through your support, we will continue to produce more films and other digital products, all with the aim of ending the occupation and fostering changes in our country towards a shared and peaceful future. Please make your contribution now. And thank you so much for your support.